Hey guys, this is Dr. Orion, and I want to take a look for the last time at the Blood DK, my main. Um, you can see him here doing, um, I'm doing 14 out of 14 heroic with it, and see the Vagamar, this is my garage kill with my uh, guild Humbrus. And I want to take a final look because so uh, there are some things changing. Uh, the bit, uh, biggest thing is, I'm going to change, I'm going to stop tanking. I've been tanking in Wrath of Lich King, I've been tanking in Cataclysm, and I've been tanking in Missile Pandaria. And I'm gonna re-roll to Mage. Um, I've tanked three characters, a Prop Paladin, Guardian Druid, and uh, this Blood DK. I started tanking on the Blood DK in uh, Thunder from the Normal. I did Normals, did some Heroics, did uh, Seed of Vargamar Normal and Seed of Vargamar Heroic. Uh, so yeah, pretty much done some Good experience with it. I always had it as an alt, never as a main. I did uh, DPS on it and tanked with it in the past and wrote the King and some Cataclysm and all that kind of good stuff. But it was uh, my main because um, when I was in Throne of Thunder, I did Mogus and Falls, Huff and Toes on my Guardian. And then at some point, um, the guild got a druid, another Guardian druid, and uh, they asked me to main switch, and I kind of wanted to go to uh, the Blood DK. What is to say about this class? First time I had amazingly fun with it. It was, it's, I think it's fun to play. I think it's fun uh, to work with. I think it's, it's, it's really, really good. Survivability, not much of an issue. I think prod paladins, prod warriors, heavy diesel. I just want to make a short video about what do I think of it after Mr. Pandaria. And I think if I look at any tank, uh, I think it's doing its, its job really good. But it has some flaws. It has some really flaws, which, uh, which, yeah, it's a sad kind of thing. Uh, utility, it does, uh, it's, except for the anti-magic zone, uh, you can choose to uh, for that talent. Except for that, there's like nothing you can choose. There's like nothing you can uh, bring as a as a class. Except for the battle rest, but there are like druids who have them as well. There are warlocks who can do the same, all the kind of good gears. So you don't need me for that. If I compare myself to a pro warrior with his offensive banner, with his defensive banner, um, with his AOE interrupts, I bring way less utility. If I look at a prod battle then with his devotion auras, with his blessings, I bring way less. I mean, I do have an attack power buff, but a paladin has his uh, kings and his might. Or stats in his mind. A warrior has his, his shouts, but utilities have come down. If you got a crit banner and you have a, a defensive banner, and you have an a as a pro warrior, yeah, you're ahead. Druid has tranquility, guardian druid. Pro, pro paladin, that aura, devotion aura, and his blessings, his uh, sacrifice, if, it's, uh, if I'm correct. So, how did the blood decay hold up? Um, well, to be honest. It was really fun to play, and I did not think survivability was big of an issue. If you played this right, if you use your blood depth, if you use your death strike, if you use your cooldowns right, you would be in no problem. You got physical uh, damage reduction cooldowns, you had uh, magical reduction cooldowns, you're fine, you're in there, it's no problem. But the moment you start slacking on your death strike, if you're too late with a death strike, you're gonna panic your healers. Um, we did this uh, kill with a uh, Resto Shaman and, and Holy Paladin, so I need to watch myself. Uh, I can't slack, so I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, I had the personal feeling that a prop Paladin and Pot Warrior were a little bit easier to queue up. Could have been me, but if I watch my colleague uh, play on this uh, Pot Warrior, if I watch Rune, this is my friend of mine who also tanked in Humbrus, um, I had the idea that with even though he was lower gear than me, he was he just was like 575, I was 584 uh, at some point was the difference. And he was just as easy to keep up me. Um, and that's not my playing, that's just the way Death Knight works. I know I play this 100% right, I really do. And uh, I think it's the same for a Paladin, and Paladin can heal himself. Uh, I know Death Strike can too with his Death Strike, but if that Death Strike is not usable, or if you don't use that 5 stacks, you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble, especially on a hard boss like Garish Heroic. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time. This was really uh, pushing my Death Knight solo thing in uh, Garish Heroic. It could have been done, but you see me dropping all the time. You see me rubber banding. It's not what I like. Um, and I think the 
Pro Paladins, Pro Warriors have it much easier over there. Oh, Paladin can heal himself. And the other thing is like, uh, with a perfect setup, I only killed Garage once because with the perfect setup like we have now, two Warlocks, uh, two Rogues, a uh, Mage and two Shamans. And we hit them one Feral Lord, but that was pr basically a perfect setup, you know? And then I was like, you can come, it's alright, uh, I could tank it. You know, I was tanking in this guild for a very, very, very long time. So, that was all good. Uh, but, the moment that set up for like a boss like Garrosh Rogue wasn't perfect, they needed some more interrupts, they rather bring in a warrior. Why? He has his AoE shout. He has that, uh, also those AOE, uh, those uh, raid buffs. Or bring in a prop paladin who does a sick amount of raid healing and also has an Avengers shield to uh, silence three targets at the same time. I don't have anything that is a blood that night. Now I don't want to end up negative, but those are just the facts. And you see that being balanced out and what? You see those banners being taken away for the plot warrior. You see that utility becoming less because they're just overpowered. That's basically it. Except for the anti magic zone, we, we had nothing to bring. Yeah, the attack power buff, uh, buff and battle rest. Attack power buff comes from a lot of classes and the battle rest also. So that's nothing special. You don't bring anything, you don't bring a Devotion Hour, you don't bring a Crit Banner, you don't bring an AoE Interrupt, you don't bring a Defensive Banner, nothing. Only Anti-Magic Zone, it's only for magical damage, otherwise it's useless. So that's the way I felt was like, Death Knight is kind of a little bit behind on that. And you see that being tweaked out in, um, in Wallace Drenner, that stuff is getting removed from the Warrior, is getting his, his banners removed. Like it should be, because it was overpowered, or you rather brought a war prod, uh, prod warrior than a bot DK. Simple as that. Um, same with a prop paladin, who was just better uh, better to bring than a uh, blood DK for certain situations. Um, Thug Heroic. You rather bring on Thug Heroic a prop paladin than a blood DK. Simple. It's just better because of Devotion Aura. It is. So that's what we lacked. That is getting fine-tuned. Um, the other thing that's going to change is like Heart Strike and Pestilence are getting into Blood Boil. Uh, so, in what? So, that's uh, another thing I really don't like is like I'm AoEing on single target rotation. I like Heart Strike, keep it in the game. That Rune Strike is going for Death Coil. Fine, I really like the Death Coil animation. I think it looks good. Uh, it gives some range. It's all good. Uh, but still, um, overall, to have a look at this blood decay, um, this I'm gonna stop tanking, and the reason is I got health issues. I'm not doing too well, and um, I want to raid less. And if you're tanking and saying, "Hey guys, I'm not coming for it tonight," uh, your raid is not gonna like it because they lack a tank. So I needed to step down. I could stay on this playing Frost or Unholy. I don't want to. I really do not like melee DPS. As crazy as it sounds, I love tanking. I don't like melee DPSing that much. So I needed to make a main switch, I decided on that I'm gonna roll a mage, uh, as it looks for now. Uh, the other choice I have, uh, patch is coming out tomorrow, is a Munkin with a Guardian Ospec. That's my uh, other choice that I might go to, because Munkin seems as uh, are going to be easier to play. And when they need a tank, when, a, when the guild needs me as a backup tank, I can go... Uh, I can go Moon if I can go Guardian really easy. It's Guardian is I never found it hard to play. I think the Guardian Druid and the Munkin are quite fun. The Munkin is uh, pretty fun as well as it is right now, but it's gonna be easier, so it's going to be easy to manage two classes. Uh, two specs from one class, so it's gonna be no problem. So um, yeah. So I'm gonna reroll to range DPS preferably, and when somebody needs me I can always go like hey, okay, I can swap. So yeah. Uh, also, range DPS makes for better guides, making for better kill vids, because right now you just see me, the boss, and you don't see what the other raids are doing, so it would be more fun for making my guides, for making the boss kills, for streaming, and all that kind of stuff. That's the other reason, like, I'm comparing things, like, okay, I'm going to raid less, still want to raid, uh, I also would like to do some stuff on my YouTube channel, I also want to make kill vids, so range DPS was the go-to choice. Um, so yeah. What do I have to say about uh, Death Knights and what? Well, I did not play one, I played some on the PTR. They're gonna bring Mastery as a passive buff. Uh, things are getting tuned, so it's looking good. They're still a pretty strong tank. Uh, Prop Warriors are king right now, but I think if you look at Monks, Guardian Druids, Death Knights, Death Knights are right up there uh, with the rest of them. Prop Warriors being a little bit overpowered right now, but that's, that's okay. 
uh, I think if you want to roll blood DK, go for it because it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, it's certainly worth it. I found that it was amazing to play. If you like my videos, please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Have a good one. See ya.